Hi, and welcome to Teaching Tip Tuesday. My name is Michelle, AKA The Ignited Teacher. And what I do here on Teaching Tip Tuesday is I help math teachers of struggling learners to effectively manage their classrooms and to increase student achievement. And you might be asking, well, how do you do that? I do it through um, high quality math instructional strategies as well as classroom management, response to intervention, project-based learning, and technology integration, which tonight's topic I'm going to be talking about um, implementing a digital interactive notebook in your classroom. So if you're new here, you can catch me here on Tuesday nights at 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And if you can't catch me live, you can definitely catch me on a replay. Um, a lot of times my replays get taken down, well, really not taken down, unpinned from my Facebook page um, when there's another Teaching Tip Tuesday. But you can always catch me on YouTube. So I'm live streaming on three different platforms, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook at the same time. So my YouTube channel is where you can always catch me. And you're probably saying, well, what is your YouTube channel name? My YouTube channel name is The Ignited Teacher. So anywhere on the web, if you type in The Ignited Teacher, you'll find me. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being a part of this episode of Teaching Tip Tuesday. So let's go ahead and dive right in into tonight's topic. So we're virtual. Today was our first day of school. It was an interesting first day of school, to say the least. Technology issues. Yeah, we expected those. Um, yeah, our district's website crashed. So that was interesting, but Teams um, stayed true because it's not on the district server. So that part of school was able to go on. And I'm sure as time goes on, things will get better. But because we are virtual, I've had to change several different things about my classroom. One is I'm not there to teach. And so a lot of things in my class are structured in a way that supports the learners in my classroom. For those of you all who know me, you know that I deal with struggling learners. I'm a math interventionist and I provide Algebra 1 support for ninth graders. And a lot of my students struggle. They have IEPs, they have behavior intervention plans. I work with English language learners as well as special education students because really just because a student is labeled special education does not mean that they cannot learn mathematics. They just need mathematics with support. And I've seen and I've proven that time and time again with my students making the gains that they need to make in these areas. So today, I brought my interactive notebook and I haven't looked at it since really um, we left. I haven't even looked at any notebooks or anything. So I'm just going to show you a couple of pages in my notebook to give you an idea of how my notebook works. So this is my notebook and it has you know the rounding versus estimation and i use a lot of graphic organizers in my classroom and you'll see that in the digital notebook that i'm going to show you but what i try to do is take my interactive notebook and recreate it in a digital format. And the funny thing about it is I really, really like the digital format. I don't know how well it's going to work with the population of students that I work with, but I think I can scaffold it enough and do a lot of the front end chugging and plugging for them so that it can be something that they can 
enjoy. So what I am going to show you tonight is the why behind interactive notebooks and what I'm doing to support my um, population of students that I service um, if you have students that uh, struggle with mathematics and they're struggling with that comprehension component, an interactive notebook is a great way to engage them. If you are watching this on the replay um, and even the live, you can find my link to my um, website. Uh, it has the uh, it's a blog post I wrote. I want to say it was about two, three years ago. And it talked about engaging the unengaged. I really got heavenly into interactive notebooks. I want to say in 2014, when I came back to Texas. Yeah. And maybe right before then, I was... It was a, it, it's been about six years that I've been working with interactive notebooks and I've revamped them and made them a lot better so that it meets the needs of my students. It is not a cut and place activity. I know a lot of people are like, well, interactive notebooks, the kids are playing in it. And it's really not. It's a real good way to engage students that need more than just the notes. And it really teaches them how to organize them, your, themselves. Now, when you're implementing, whether it be digital, whether it be in person, a notebook, you have to have a goal for your notebook. So my first goal for my notebook is to teach my students how to be organized. So all of my pages have titles. And I teach them how to write inside of the margin, whether it's going to be digital or not, or it's paper and pencil. I teach them how to highlight things, draw diagrams, put things that they may need inside of them. Now, a lot of times it does start off as procedural. I do, they do. But the kids start to get into it and they use their own colors. They not might, nece might not necessarily use the colors that I use for my interactive notebook. They may add some things to it, but it's really a way for them to take ownership. And then as the school year progresses, that ownership of their learning comes through the notebook. So when they have a question, they know that that math interactive notebook, whether it be digital or paper-based, is where they need to go first. Because a lot of the students that I teach, and especially your tier two, tier three students, feel like they don't have the knowledge to sustain them, or and they're not really sure about what they know. And what I do is give them or empower them to feel like that Yes, I may not know it all, but I know a place where I can go get it. So that's very empowering for them. And it releases you from be doing all the chugging and plugging and thinking for the students. And they have a tool that they can take with them. And I had one of my students, I want to say a year or two ago, I said, Ms. Williams, I still use my interactive notebook after they left fifth grade and went to middle school. So it's something that they can take with them and refer back to because these skills, math skills build, and they will definitely see them in high school, fifth grade skills, sixth grade skills. They will see all of it in the next grade level. It just may not look the same. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Now, this is an example of, let me scroll over, the way that I use my interactive notebook. And it, one of my, I do redraw, right? That is my problem solving strategy. And also I may do like an insert, as you can see on the right hand side, 
I have a number line. We were rounding decimals as well as where they cut out and use the number line to solve or work the problems. And then on the picture at the bottom, that was equivalent fractions. So it's kind of like a pull up. You would, you had the algorithm on top and then at the bottom you have the pictorial version of the algorithm. And that was really huge in elementary, especially in fifth grade, a lot of the kids definitely for the star had to know the algorithm as well as the pictorial even to be proficient in mathematics so those were the things that we i combined in my my lesson then now let's talk about the coronavirus this is where i am today and it looks a lot different, but I really, really like it. It's, it's really colorful and playful. I, I like colors. If you know me, you know that I am a fan of the arts. Let me scoot over. Um, and I really like this cover. As you can see, they have tabs at the top. And I'm going to take you through my digital notebook and talk about the ways that I plan on implementing it into my on virtual classroom. Now, even when we go back face to face, I'll still use this. I'm not sure if I'm going to continue to use it in my classroom. It just depends on how well it works with the students. I may go back to paper-based. Then again, I may not, or maybe a combination of the two, but we'll see. But for right now, we're just going to use it as a digital resource. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Now let me move some things around. Let me share my screen. All right, so that's on my So this is my interactive notebook. And as you can tell, I'm really, really proud of it. <laughs> and it's so funny. Um, I really, really like it. So it's built in Google Slides. This just is the portrait version of it. It's not in landscape. Now, I, like I said, I do math intervention for Algebra 1, and the kids, this is just my Bitmoji, and the kids, they'll end up putting their own in there. So let me go ahead and show you the tab. So if I put this in the presentation mode, these links, they link to different sections in the book so as you can see it's color coded so if i go back to that so that's how that works now just like with my interactive notebook as you can see i the kids they can click these are just text boxes and what i did is went in and added some graphic organizers one of the things that i really really like is that you can click here and go to apply layout let me go ahead because i had to minimize it to make it larger that's the crazy thing about this so if i right click on here i can go to apply layout and i have all these different layouts in here so for example, I can go in here and add new slide with layout. So say for instance, I want my students to add a double bubble map. I've already created that layout for them in the master template, or let me go undo that. Say for instance, I want my students to add a T-chart. I've already preloaded these graphic organizers for them. 
Now, some teachers, if you're starting out, you may not know that you'll need those, but I pretty much know that I'm going to use the graphic organizers um, as well as um, I know I'm going to need just some paper for them to take notes. So I've preloaded these into the master slide. Now, a lot of you probably are saying, well, what is that master slide? So it's just here. If I go in the back, this is what keeps it from moving. So I, I've preloaded these in here. So if I close that out, see the kids can't move the actual gra graphic. It's, it's um, stuck there. And they can add a text box and then, you know, say for instance, we're talking about perpendicular lines. You can talk about equivalent fractions and they'll provide a word that describes. They can color code it. You could put pictures here. It could be whatever you want it to be. Now, I really like this because it provides an engagement tool and, you know, the kids get to put their spin on it as well. So that's what I really, really like about it. Let me put it in presentation mode so you can see what it actually looks like. And there's the paper. So I really haven't finished much of it. Well, all of it. And also to get the students started, I created a expectations interactive notebook as well. Now this is for my students to practice with because you know um, a lot of the kids that I teach are not going to come with the computer skills that they need. So as we talk about math intervention expe expectations for my classroom, I can go through here and the kids will add it to it and they are actually learning how to put their digital notebook together. So that's the other thing that I'm doing. So it actually ties. So by the time I get to my own interactive notebook, that expectations notebook will have that stuff in there as well. So let me go back. So that's my notebook. And the reason, like I said, I really like it because it becomes a resource for my students and they really enjoy the notebooks because it, it gives them an outlook, outlet. And especially my artistic children, they really do well with the math when there's it's kind of presented in their mode of learning because they're creatives and i have friends that are creative more specifically i have a friend who's an art teacher and she does she thinks a lot differently and she really thinks in colors so like if i can add color to the math and bring in especially that piece it brings in a piece of the students and it helps them to connect with the math. As well as my students who are more re-ELA oriented, you know, that tech. So the interactive notebook brings in that piece as well, especially with those graphic organizers and things. And math is just one of those subjects that it doesn't lend itself to either or. It's kind of a hybrid of ELA and it has its own language, but you just have to know how to have the right mix. And I think the interactive notebooks, when you implement those in your classrooms, it helps 
with the different learning styles in your classroom. It's just not always algorithm driven. It's not always project driven. So it just kind of gives this a, it a balance, especially when kids are acquiring new concepts. That interactive notebook is like the peacemaker in the classroom. So um, hopefully you got some ideas about interactive notebooks. If you were thinking about um, implementing an interactive notebook in your classroom, whether it be digital or, or uh, paper-based, definitely check out the link in the description uh, where we, I talk about engaging the unengaged for mathematics. And I talk about how my students came alive with math and they just kind of bought into the idea of the interactive notebook, even the ones that were not motivated. Because I often talk about the can't do, won't do student. Sometimes we have children that can't do. We have students that can do, but won't do because it's a motivation issue. And sometimes that interactive notebook is the thing that will motivate them because it, it puts it in a different mode. And I never say that it's the word fun, but it just appeals to what makes them tick. And I've seen children come alive in that regard. So that's all I have for Teaching Tip Tuesday. If you have any questions, comments, Definitely leave them in the comment section on Facebook. Tweet to me on Twitter. You can also leave it in the comment section on YouTube. I hope that you found that this Teaching Tip Tuesday was helpful. And if you have any topics that you would like for me to talk about, you can email them to me at michelle at theignitedteacher.com. So thank you for joining me and I'll see you in my next live stream. Bye-bye.